characterizes lithics in North America after the Bering, the Bering uh, land bridge has allowed uh, Homo sapiens into that continent. But you can see this uh, development. Um, this is a, a, a nice little diagram which shows what you can get out of the kilogram of, um, of flint um, eventually in the microlith technology up to 20 meters of blade edge if you're really smart with it. So that's a, the, this, this on the other hand is the sort of stuff that the Tasmanians had at contact. And so you can see that people were thinking this is, um, this is not a very developed culture. So there is a, is a list of things they didn't have surrounded by water and sea and fish, not fishing, very wet environment, windy, cold, it's no, climate no better than most parts of Scotland and they're naked in it. Um, uh, but they do have a repertoire of 24 items which everyone can make and those include simple stone tools, digging sticks, spear, firebrand, baby sling, the kelp water bucket and the trapping net. And um, I'm not sure that I can make 24 things from scratch. They made these whenever they needed them at point of use. It's known as an expedient technology. And um, they were living uh, at sustainable population levels and had been isolated from the mainland for the last 10,000 years. And um, you might argue they weren't doing too badly. But, but even modern accounts that have got rid of late Victorian racism, or even 20th century racism, have suggested that there is a process of technological impoverishment, that something went wrong. And I suppose the most well-known des description of this is in Jared Diamond's books, book Guns, Germs and Steel, um, where he argues that uh, the Tasmanians were no less intelligent innately, but they somehow, if you think of these, if we take this unit of culture idea, then they lost cultural ideas over time and weren't able to reinvent them. So they lost the ability to fish, to carve fish hooks, and they must have lost the ability to make fire. So they are, in a sense, in a more desperate position than they ought to have been, but this is not the fault of innatism, it's the fault of geographical determinism, if you so, to summarise that, Darwin encouraged a biological understanding of the relations <coughs> of human culture, and Gerard Diamond retains uh, a gradation idea, albeit in a de-racified adaptationist paradigm, where material objects are seen as the extrasomatic means of successful adaptation. And this idea, uh, really, of traits is in fact what we find in the work of Graham Hancock, which I was talking with David over lunch about in the work of Richard Dawkins, effectively, that's what a meme is, it's the idea of a unitary trait that can be spread around and it goes, it has a long history that actually parallels the, uh, the development of the 19th and early 20th century race thinking in uh, Germany and indeed in Britain. These are maps from um, the uh, Manchester Egyptologist Grafton Elliot Smith's um, uh, global traits which he believed would be spread by one single master race. He didn't have them as the Germans, he had them as the Egyptians, but he said that things like sun worship, megalithic monuments, mummification, the swastika, serpent worship, uh, tattooing, ear piercing and so on, and, and the legend of the flood must all have been spread from a single source around the world by the bearers of what he called Heliolithic culture, the Heliolithic culture complex. And, uh, and that indeed eventually inspired Thor Heyerdahl to make his uh, ridiculous assertions about Easter Island uh, and, and many of the <coughs> current generation of pyramidologists to argue that the reason things are thin at the top and wide at the bottom isn't to make them more stable, but because it's a single, standalone, once-in-a-lifetime idea, the pyramid meme, which has to be spread around uh, by one group of people who are smart enough to be the bearers of the culture. 
Um, and the swastika is, in fact, another idea. You can see, see it here, and he, he graphs it on his, on his old map. This is from 1915, the migration of early culture. And I could just use that very quickly, I think I'll move through this quite quickly, to, 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 to critique briefly the meme idea. Now, if the swastika is something that is spread around the world by a master race, then we should be able to find it all around the world. In fact, we can find it all around the world. It's all over the place. There it is in Celtic Europe, there it is in, in Africa, and indeed in India. But its origins in each of those local places, once investigated, show it to be a different swastika. So, for example, in the Hindu pantheon, it's to do with the nine principal deities that you put in a, often just shown as nine dots. But if you want to join those up, then there's a good way of doing it. If you look at uh, Scythian bridal ornaments, then this is a cross piece for a horse strap, which you've decorated with your favourite animal, the horse, and you put your horses on going round, a little bit like the legs on the Isle of Man, and you, you end up with the same result. In fact, there are lots and lots of ways of getting this thing called a swastika, because it actually boils down to not be a meme, if you like, at all. It is a whole variety of endpoints that have a similarity, but which have a different aesthetic archaeology, if you like. There is no effectively definitive unit of culture that's the swastika. It's a shape that can be arrived at in a variety of ways, can be named in different ways, and understood to mean different things, nine gods, or a piece of horse harness, or a symbol for the uh, National Socialist Party in Germany uh, in the 30s. Particular forms can be reproduced or imitated, but only through a process involving intentionality and the operation of cultural grammars. Rule-based generative systems typically carry an additional and or modified content by virtue of a developing context. So unlike a member of a biological category, the swastika is in fact a polythetic entity. Now this is the killer point for me with, with the whole idea of memes, is that there are no units. You cannot actually, if you want to say that something is a, a leopard or a swallowtail butterfly or a lugworm, you can actually say what its sufficient and necessary uh, criteria for inclusion in that taxonomy are, in that taxonomic unit. That's known as a, mono, a monothetic entity. Whereas all human cultural products are, belong to polythetic groups. No matter what you think of that we use culturally, whether it's a pen, a table, a car, there is no killer feature that is at once sufficient and necessary for defining group inclusion. That is to say, a car, you can say, well, it's got to have four wheels, that's necessary, but it actually doesn't, because there's some three-wheelers, and then there are lorries which have four wheels, and then there are other <coughs> things which aren't even vehicles at all that have four wheels. So, or a chair, you might say, well, what is a chair? Is there a chair meme? Well, there's an idea about sitting down, and there's a word chair, but does it have three legs, one leg, two legs? When does it become a bench? When is it bench seating? When is it a sofa? Uh, effectively, uh, you find, and this is true, indeed, of my little objects from Cove Hole, because if we look at the idea of beads, there is no single characteristic that defines a bead, either in material, or the way it's secured, or the way they're strung, or the way that they can then uh, be used because not all things which are bead-like or have a, have a bead form are used as ornaments, but they may be used in counting or on an abacus. And in fact, all hu human cultural products have this effectively uh, characteristic of having uh, attribute, attributes in which any category you choose shares, like a car, uh, a, a car, all cars share quite a lot of attributes with one another, but there is no single attribute which defines in sufficient and necessary terms what a car is. So it's a fuzzy-edged category. And that polytheticness is one of the reasons that memes break down. So the other thing that we can note about a car, and this brings us to the issue of the Tasmanians again, that what we're familiar with in the modern West now is uh, a highly, or what we call highly entailed technologies. That is, 
uh, very multi-part um, materials from all around the world being brought together to create one highly composite 